Hello everyone and welcome back to the first episode of this series. This series will come out about every week or week and a half is the plan. Um, so what you may be wondering this series is, is I'm going to try to recode as much of Hypixel as I can locally without spending too much time per week. So what this means is we're going to go through all their devlogs in this video. I'm going to look over how they do things and I'm going to explain how we're going to do things so it doesn't make it too complicated, but we still technically recreate some of their game modes and some of their plugins. Let's get straight into this one. This is going to be a long series. I do not expect it to do that well, given the channel at the moment being mainly 5M, but I did want to start a series where I actually code a network from start to at least partially finished to the point where it can be played without any issues. So let's talk a little bit about how Hypixel runs their servers. Um, they have a overall management system that they use um, that handles all of their different processes. So let's look over this graph real quick. All of these devlogs I can link in the description below. If you've never read over them, I do recommend reading over them if you're interested. Uh, they give a lot of data. Obviously, I'm not going to be doing things like coding any of their like custom loading of worlds or anything. We're going to do a spigot non-modified equivalent of that. So we don't have to worry about using anything. Obviously, their code is not public. I can't access it. I'm just recreating what I can see um, and what we can do locally. So they have a start process that loads all of their different modules. So they have like the database, the party, the proxy, the DNS manager, all of this type of stuff that is loaded when that start process starts. Um, they have their overall connection called Goliath, which handles all of the other modules and everything else, which is pretty cool. And that also handles their Grafana instance, which have a bunch of graphs and everything on how everything loads and how often stuff goes. Um, they have in dev blog floor a lot of information on this. So they go over stats, they go over how they make all these graphs, and they have a picture like this. This is a really good picture that obviously we're not gonna be able to recreate. We can set up a Grafana instance and have stuff like that, and we can go over that later on, but we obviously aren't gonna have like 45 Bungie servers that we're gonna be running. At most, we're gonna run two, so I can explain how you can sync stuff across them, but we're not gonna be running something like Hypixel. It would be completely, um, the budget for this would be completely crazy, um, but we're gonna try to learn everything locally if we can. Um, so you can see, obviously, they track um, how many players are per Bungie, how many logins they have, what their off time is, and any of the HTTP codes that they run. And if you don't know about all of these codes and everything, a lot of stuff is handled by the databases in the back end. So um, Hypixel, preferably from what we have read, um, uses MongoDB and Influx. So Influx sends the data to Grafana which is pretty cool, but MongoDB actually handles the loading of the player data and all that good stuff instead of MySQL. MongoDB gets a little bit more efficient. We use it in Fate UHC for our plugins and stuff. I prefer um, a little bit of both. I, I normally use both. Um, we'll see what we use in this recreation. I may use MySQL to keep it a little bit easier for everyone watching if you want to follow along and code with me, um, but I will ultimately decide probably in the next episode when we actually start coding. We're not going to do any coding in this episode. We're just going to read over and look at everything. Um, so let's keep up and looking over all this. So obviously in the next one, you can see they have with Skyblock, they have all the world files. So what they do is they actually um, save it in a uh, custom format so they can load it called slime. Obviously it's not public, but they compress it so much that they can store so much data inside of their systems without having like the whole world file. So a world file that's like a gigabyte they could store for a couple of bytes in a file and just load it up instantly using their custom setup. Um, the reason they do that is obviously storage and stuff. You don't want to pay a hundred terabytes of storage for something that you can completely modify and make it two terabytes or something. Um, they go over a lot of that in the um, housing dead, uh, this one, housing tech dev log. Um, and they talk about how they moved from their existing to their new engine and then how much that is all saved and all that good stuff. Obviously, they go over in the dev blogs a lot of uh, moderation systems like Atlas and stuff. We will not be creating Atlas. That would be a huge project and not something that I would want to do um, on YouTube just for everyone to code because it would take forever. It uses a lot of different saving methods and stuff. And obviously, Hypixel doesn't make it public. You can recreate it, but it would be very challenging to do so. So I'm not going to go into anything with the replay or Atlas systems. We're going to focus mainly on the server core itself and then um, some of the game modes, probably Sky Wars, Bed Wars, uh, Murder Mystery, maybe. Go into some of those and just kind of code them one episode at a time, 
see what I can do. These videos, um, in terms of length, I don't know what they're going to be. The first episode is going to be pretty short because I'm just going to go over what we're going to be doing. Um, the second episode is probably going to be longer because we're going to actually start coding the back end for the core. Um, so we'll go over all that as well. Um, but I think they have, they went over hit registration and stuff. We're not going to be modifying spigot if we don't have to. I'm going to try to keep everything vanilla as possible. Um, I know this is not how Hypixel works at all. They do not keep it, um, vanilla, but I'm not going to be going over any of that stuff. And I, my goal is to use as little of public available plugins as possible. We may want to add some of the public plugins like mystery boxes or something. So we don't have to code that in ourselves. Um, but then use their API to hook into our existing network core. Um, so we will figure out how all that works um, in a little bit and kind of go step by step there on how it all works. So let's talk a little bit how we're going to set it up kind of like this, but we're going to do it a little differently. So we're going to be running a plugin that is mainly going to be on the Spigot server themselves. My plan is to use MongoDB, MySQL, Redis, InfluxDB, to handle all of our data. And then on the outside, I'm planning on using Grafana to list that data from InfluxDB, just like Hypixel does there. Um, MySQL, I'm planning to probably handle our ranks and stuff like that, so you can view it in nice tables. And MongoDB, we could probably use to save more of our game stats. And then Redis will load leaderboards and uh, cross server chats. So what that means is like Slack message and all that stuff would go through Redis. So we don't have to worry about it um, taking up uh, bungee cord and we don't have to make our own separate bungee cord plugins. We may make one or two bungee cord plugins, but the way that we're going to plan bungee cord to work is kind of in a round robin type situation. If you don't know what that is, it's the way DNS works. Um, so how Hypixel and Mindplex and all those servers do it is they have it set up. So when a proxy server comes online, that DNS is added to the record. So when they, and then when one goes down or they want to start emptying one, they remove that record so no new players can connect to it. They're connecting to other servers. Now the proxies are, that is pretty much what they do. They're proxies. They just send the player from there into your Spigot servers. And if you've never been on Hypixel during a restart, this is how it kind of works. They empty that proxy by removing it from the round robin. And then once that is empty enough or there's like zero players, they restart it and then it's added back to the proxy list inside of their DNS servers. Um, the reason they do that is to make sure that the players don't all quit at once from the proxy. So you don't have to kick everyone and you have and give them time to do that. And that works across the network with all their core updates and stuff. So unless it's something serious, like where they had to shut the network down for a week and move all to Cloudflare, it's not going to be a big deal um, updating because they just pick the servers they want to update and the automated system slowly rolls it out um, across the network. And then they don't actually make the announcement about the updates until after that rollout is complete. So the server is completely live with that new update. It's a pretty cool way of doing it. We can talk about updating systems. We will go over a simple updating system using FTP or SFFTP. Um, which I've already kind of set up and designed. Um, I've set up most of the stuff I'm going to be going over in the video before, um, but I'm just going to be showcasing it in the video and how we code and all that good stuff um, in future videos. But um, let's talk a little bit how we're going to handle balancing and everything. So you may have heard of Redis Bungie before. Pretty much what that does is it syncs um, player counts and stuff across the servers, which is a really cool way of doing it. We are going to be kind of doing the same thing, but without using the plugin. Um, we are just going to be handling that from our own core. So we're kind of implementing their type of system inside of our own core to handle the um, balancing of players and everything and uh, DNS and all of that. We are going to be using Cloudflare for DNS servers and everything in this video. We will not be using Spectrum, which is what I believe Hypixel uses now to handle um, player connections and stuff. We won't be doing that, but we will be doing basic DNS stuff because Spectrum is very expensive per gigabyte. It's like 50 cents per gigabyte and obviously with high pixels traffic even though they're on an enterprise plan it's probably pretty expensive for them to do um, obviously if you're a high pixel developer and somehow watching this video let me know down in the comments if anything i've said is incorrect and i'm happy to update the record but i'm going off of what i know from all of the dev blogs and all the replies and tweets and stuff developers have sent out um, in terms of management of the core itself and all the utility files i'm planning on making it a public github repository if you want to check it out and try to run it um, but obviously those types of um, connection strings and databases and stuff like that aren't going to be set up on a local host. This is not going to be something where you have a configure file that you can run. Almost everything's going to be hard-coded 
into the source code. Um, so obviously we're not going to go over kind of how that all um, works on GitHub because I don't want to leak all the database credentials and all of that good stuff. So those types of things may be limited in the database, but um, I'm going to hopefully release as much code as I can on GitHub so you can all follow along with me. Um, but that is kind of my overall plan. We're going to start with the core system ranks, um, coins, stuff like that. And then we will move into the lobby and try to get the lobby done in one video, maybe one or two videos. The core uh, MySQL systems should only take about one video. Um, and we'll add Influx and uh, Grafana and stuff way down the line, um, probably episode four or five. Um, but this is pretty much what we're going to be doing. Hopefully you enjoy it. I'm sorry this video didn't include any coding. kind of want to get my thoughts out there and showcase kind of what my idea is for the series. And hopefully you do enjoy it. If it's just not that popular, it's okay. We don't have to finish it. But if this is popular for some reason and you really enjoy it, make sure to check out the future videos. Um, about one a week is our plan. So make sure to check it out if you haven't already um, in the playlist. Because by the time you're watching this, it's most likely there is multiple videos. Um, so make sure to check them out if you haven't already. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Um, and we will get into this starting next week. So have a great weekend. Happy end of the month to you. Check out the shorts and everything from this week. And I will see you in the video in a couple of days. So see you all then. Have a great rest of your week.